I have a couple of questions. So, first is uh, about centralization of uh, uh, mining. So we know that like, around 80% or so hashing powers in China. And so how do you see this uh, uh, centralization problem uh, <coughs> uh, can get solved? Okay, let me try uh, taking those two. Uh, the first one, uh, mining centralization. I, I think I, I've talked about this many times before, uh, and in my mind, I think mining centralization is the result of this very, very rapid acceleration in the hashing power and going from CPU-based mining to ASIC mining and, and straight up to catch up with Moore's Law, the front end of Moore's Law. And I think we're going to see the equation change a lot now that we've reached the front end of Moore's Law. And now that the increases you can get are maybe 2x, not 10,000x in a year. That may change things. But one of the reasons this is happening in China, and I think we need to be aware of this is not some kind of communist conspiracy to take over Bitcoin by the government of China. It's important to realize that one of the things that's driving mining centralization in China is that it's better for mining to be in China. And the reason it's better for mining is because China has experienced this enormous growth in its electricity generation over the past 20 years. At some point, I remember the statistic vaguely in 2012, um, they were turning on a new coal-fired plant every 16 hours. Every 16 hours, they were turning on a new electricity factory, a big one. And uh, it was projected that that would not keep up with the demand for electricity because it was growing even faster than that. That's really quite astonishing. So what happens when you build a lot of uh, generation capacity but no distribution network? You end up with a situation that is very unlike what we have in the United States. In the United States, there are basically two, generation, two distribution networks. Um, there's a grid that connects the vast majority of the continents with U.S. together, um, whereby electricity can be sent from Connecticut to Pennsylvania if there's excess capacity in one place and excess demand in another. Then there's a second distribution network that serves Texas. Because it's Texas. <laughs> They're like, you have a distribution network? Oh, fuck y'all, we're going to make our own. <laughs> And so they have to. Um, and so the that was a terrible Texan accent. <laughs> half British, half three. Recently Americanized. That was terrible. Anyway, it was a bit Indian, maybe. Anyway. Um, so what happens in the U.S. is if you have excess capacity from a factory and you have demand somewhere else, you just ship it across the distribution network. And in China, you don't. You just waste it. You, you, you don't have anything to do with that electricity. If it's generated and it's not used on the spot by the local area where you can distribute it, um, it's wasted. So there's this very big difference between what's being generated and what's being used. And what can you do with the excess capacity? What do you do with the electricity that would otherwise get wasted? That would otherwise simply get wasted? Well, one thing you can do is you can turn off the power, right? You can turn off the plant. The problem is that some of these plants, you know, it takes six hours to turn it off and eight hours to turn it back on. So if you're going to have a lull in demand for four hours, there's not enough time to turn it off and on again, so you just leave it on. Wasted energy. Other plants, you can't turn them off at all. I was reading about this mining farm that has located itself in this tiny village in China um, where there's nothing. Um, except for a hydroelectric plant that was built as part of these development projects. And they have a hydroelectric plant that generates way too much electricity that they're not actually using, and that was getting wasted. So some enterprising person went there and said, hey, Bitcoin mining. I'm like, what? <laughs> What's that? Free money from electricity. I'm like, oh, we'll take some of that. Um, so now they're doing 50 or 60 megawatts of Bitcoin mining out of these completely ramshackle warehousey buildings that will put up overnight. Um, 
And you can think that's wasteful or it's concentration of mining in China. What they're doing is they're solving a problem. They have electricity that's being produced. They can't turn it off. They, they don't want to disinvest in electricity because eventually they're going to catch up with that level of capacity. And they found a creative way to turn that into money. Bitcoin is a battery. It's a battery that stores energy in the form of Bitcoin that they can then use to buy electricity in the future, or to buy oil, or to buy other forms of energy. It's an energy storage mechanism. Um, and I think that's brilliant. I'm not worried about centralization of mining in China, because the incentives are so high to keep it going. and The only way you keep it going is by playing by the rules of consensus. Um, so the problem is that if a, a highfalutin official went in there and said, "We're going to ban Bitcoin," you know, everybody in that village would be um, question question here. Um, all of our income comes from that building. Um, what, what are you going to give us if you turn it off? What are they going to do? We're going to send a warrant to shut you down. Great. Good luck finding a police officer who's going to do that. They're all getting paid by the mining equipment, right? And so you see, the problem is that there is a big disparity between political power and electrical power. <laughs> um, so I'm not worried about centralization of mining in China because centralization of mining in China is representing the best of entrepreneurial capitalism in a very disruptive way in a country that desperately needs the best of entrepreneurial capitalism. We should be applauding it. Um, and honestly, we wouldn't be having this discussion if it was mining centralization in Sweden. Everybody would be going, "Yeah, awesome." <laughs> Another terrible accent. Uh, so I, I, I'm not worried about that. I think it's going to change, and I think it's not a problem while it doesn't change. 